So the garden building is four levels of activity. There's the ground level, two enclosed levels and a roof terrace. And they're linked together by an external staircase. So the whole building acts as a giant stair to get from Bowen Street up to the new level seven rooftop, which is a whole new parallel open space realm for students and staff at the campus. The structure is completely made of glue lamb timber with concrete precast floors and a steel facade hung off these. It has garden running right through all levels, both inside and outside the building in large pots and the spaces are all mixed mode ventilated, meaning that they can be opened or closed depending on the climatic conditions. Blue Lamb's been around for, for a long time in, in sort of more rudimentary forms, and it's really picked up in the last sort of, you know, 50 years and even more so in the last sort of 20 and 10 years as, as technology has improved. Europe really had a big push 20, 30 years ago. Um, that sort of migrated into Canada, you know, maybe 10 or 20 years ago. And now, even though it has been around for some time here in Australia, we're starting to see it used more and more as there's that sort of push towards the, the sustainable materials. So glue lamb is, is made uh, up of a lot of sort of smaller pieces of, of timber sections. So the type of sections that you'd see in sort of your normal stud wall, those are planed down into a, you know, a nice tight precision. Uh, and then they're, they're dried so that they, they, they make sure they're at the right moisture content. Then they're, they're pressurized uh, and, and glued together uh, under very high pressures in order to make one sort of solid section of timber that, that almost looks uniform. Um, and essentially is. And the advantages of that are we can go longer, we can go higher, we can get stronger. Um, and then if you look at a, a knot in a piece of timber, which might be its weak point, uh, by, by putting a bunch of little timbers together, you really sort of spread out those, those, those weak points, which means that your whole section is actually incredibly strong. So it allows us to, to compete with, with things like steel and, and concrete. And timber having the highest sort of strength uh, to weight ratio and of all those materials, it really, really benefits us. What we're doing here is we're actually building uh, the skeleton itself, which is our large sort of timber beams and columns, but also the floor panels as well. So what you see here in our factory is gonna be the finished floor um, for this building. We've got uh, CNC technology here, which is uh, basically computer numeric controlled machines that allow us to, to shape the timber into sort of anything we want it to be. Uh, which allows us to, to prefabricate everything in the shop before it goes out to site. So with everything being prefabricated in the shop, uh, it's sort of a full kit of parts. So we've got all of our, you know, our timber. Uh, we also have our sort of steel connections and fasteners. We've got our panels so that basically when it goes out to be put up on site, it's a full kit of parts and uh, just needs to be assembled on site and, uh, and ready to be, be finished and used. We were interested in the idea of the forest and the different stratifications of a forest, the ground story, the mid story and the, the canopy layer, and whether we could somehow create an exploded version of that. So the concept was the eclectic forest. The key considerations when designing a garden within CBD conditions are, first of all, the light and secondly, the weight of the, the growing medium. With all the high buildings around, there's a lot more shade than you would get in a, in a natural parkland setting. So we needed to really understand which parts of the site were in shade, which parts would receive sun, and, and try and approximate how much sun they would receive at different times of the year. To understand that, we've used um, 3D modeling, and in particular using shade studies to look at the different situations and the different floors of the building, and then understanding how much light they're getting during the day, during winter, during spring, and during summer. And that would then inform our plant choices to try and use plants that we know can thrive under those particular conditions. Mm -hmm.